today, I'm here to tell you about what we can do with the brain of a little worm. C. elegans is a one millimeter long worm. With a rather simple brain, it can exhibit remarkable behavioral plasticities that the current state-of-the-art state AI systems are yet to produce, given the capacity. Its nervous system contains only 302 cells that are hardwired by approximately around 8,000 neurons. And with that simple brain, it can still learn, it can, it can mate, it can, complex, it can uh, process complex chemicals and complex sensory data, and also it can adopt search mechanisms in the environment. C. elegans is amongst the world's best understood animals. Its entire nervous system was mapped in 1986, and it provided a substrate for research and asked the questions of how the brain gives rise to behavior. So I'm an AI scientist. I'm fascinated by how much C. elegans can get with such little computational resources, especially given the capacity and given the AI systems that we are developing these days. Then when I look like, closer to the architecture of the brain, so there are certain features that I want to like, discuss with you guys. So the first thing is that I see a particular hierarchical architecture of the nervous system that, has, uh, that is actually uh, specific to C. elegans, and I'll tell you more about it. Then um, the network is not an all-to-all -all connected network. So every node is, connect is not connected to all part of this nervous system. It, there are certi cer uh, certain neuronal pathways. So the network is a sparse. And um, we know that synaptic trans transmissions in nervous systems in general are much more complex than the way that we are currently treating AI systems. And this is also true with how neuronal dynamics are realized and uh, in, in actual nervous systems. So I want to have these kind of features and ask myself, can I have an AI system that can produce such similar behavior and be as expressive as C. elegans given those features. With, um, together with our teams at uh, Vienna University of Technology, at um, Institute of Science and Technology, in um, Institute of Molecular Pathology in Vienna, and MIT, we create these systems. So we create systems that are similar and closer to the um, uh, closer to the capacities of natural learning systems. So I would like to also especially thank and acknowledge my colleagues' uh, contributions to this work, that we are working together closely at all levels, concept, design, and implementation. We designed this system, so we got those four features of the nervous system, and we designed and we formalized them in a, in a form of an artificial, a new artificial intelligence system that incorporates the hierarchical design, so to process input data and to generate an output, similar to what C. elegans has. And also we incorporated some rules that adapt the sparsity of the network within this platform. We also um, got closer in mathematical expressions than uh, that uh, synaptic propagation happens. So we actually have a richer synaptic propagation and a richer synaptic connection. So we for, uh, formulated actually a, a, a kind of dynamical system, and now we want to solve AI tasks with such systems. So here I'm showing you a control uh, dashboard. So on this dashboard, on the right side, you see one example circuit, small circuit, inspired by the brain of the worm that wants to control an inverted pendulum problem. So actually the environment on the left I'm showing. So basically the circuit wants to control and balance the pole on an upright position. And on the, right, on the top side, I'm showing a learning curve uh, during the learning process that the network was getting tuned in order to maximize the amount of reward in the system so that, that we can collect. How much we can keep this pe pendulum actually uh, upward. So let's see. 
So right now, the red dot on the learning curve shows that where we are at the training. So at the beginning of the process, you see the circuit cannot realize the behavior, so the pendulum falls constantly. But then, the more the, the system is getting learned, we see that we are, we are trying to maximize actually the capacity of the system. And uh, now, for example, now we're in the middle of the curve. Still, the circuit is uh, trying to capture the behavior. Now it should work better because we are higher and we learned much more in the system. And then uh, once we reach on the rightest part of the uh, learning curve, the system has learned how to control this pendulum, like this scenario. Let me show you another example. This is actually another uh, control problem where we have an underpowered car that we want to create a momentum. So this circuit is trying to create a momentum for the car to drive it uphill. And now I'm showing you one successful episode of training in this system. So as we see, we are, uh, the circuit is interacting and interplay with each other in order to create that. And now we have that. So now uh, let's see another episode of that where you can look at the circuit and dynamics of the system that is trying to um, uh, create such momentum to solve this problem. And now. So we also extended it in real life applications. Okay, that was simulated platforms and then we extended it to autonomous uh, kind of parking of, uh, of some robots in our lab and as we see the task is done with the same, same kind of circuit that uh, I showed you before. So what is the next step that we design these platforms and that now what we do? We try to quantify and we try to understand the behavior of these circuits that we have. For example, here I'm showing the neurons that, uh, that are involved in, the, in, in controlling those tasks and I'm projecting the activity of one node to the output in order to see what form of dynamics this network is creating and with some quantitative methods that we develop, we want to understand what happens inside the systems. So after, and then um, this actually increases also the expressivity of the network. So what, what, why do we have to do this? Like we have artificial neural networks that already can handle these problems. So what are the advantages? Why you're, why you're doing this? So we actually try to compare this to uh, other artificial intelligence systems that are available. And I want to count three advantages of these systems. The first one is in uh, environments such as full autonomous parking scenarios. So I actually had a video here, but okay. So this car is actually moving in the environment, trying to find a parking spot, and then performing a parking trajectory. And also, it can avoid uh, collisions, so with, with obstacles on its way. Then in those kind of tasks, then um, with the simplest artificial neural network we could do for this specific task, uh, with 943 trainable parameters, we could solve this problem. And then, with our systems, we could do that with only 49 trainable parameters. So our networks are smaller in size than current artificial intelligence systems. We know that environment is always comes with uncertainty and there are so many interactions and disturbances on the world, like noise, like for example, a, an autonomous car that is uh, moving in the streets, so all of a sudden environment can cause rain and you know sensors of the robot can get distracted. So noise is a parameter that always attack uh, a learning system. So then if you try to have a curve where we are increasing on the horizontal axis, we are increasing the amount of noise of the environment and we measure the output dis disturbances on the system, we want to compare this between artificial intelligence methods and our method, and this is how our system is reacting. So these systems are highly resilient to noise. 
So as, as we compare to their equivalent artificial intelligence in tasks such as autonomous parking. And the third advantage that I want to count is the most important one. These systems are more interpretable. They are expressive. We can understand dynam internal, their internal dynamics. So on the left side, I'm showing you a simple artificial neural network that handles this form of problems. And as we see, this is such a complex uh, kind of architecture in order to understand its behavior. So on the right, I'm showing one of our networks that actually can solve the similar problem with much less parameters and also like having ex more expressive kind of neuronal dynamics. So with networks with such advantages, we are getting closer to have control systems that are safer, such as autonomous cars that we are working on right now. And we know that autonomous cars and environments with high uncertainty are going to are going to soon become uh, the everyday norm for artificial intelligence agents. Thank you.